Nevertheless, then again, we've called them in the past the House of Blech. But now they're doing a spooky entrance, but it's not, they're not popping up on a, on a screen and answering people like they're live when it's obviously a pre-tape. It's not a David Copperfield vanishing routine. They're not stepping into the box and then the box falls open and there's nobody there and they've been transported over to the La Brea tar pits. They're three tattooed, weird-looking guys and Julia Hart uh, that do a spooky entrance and they're having matches. So I can deal with this. And they B-rolled again, Andre trying to get the mask back from last week. And that's why he's barred from the building. And their opponents for the six-man tag team title were the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. And we mentioned, Brian, that the acclaimed, since they got real popular because Caster's raps and the personality and the scissors thing with Billy Gunn, and then Tony really didn't know how to capitalize on it, but the mistake he made was putting the tag team title on them because it was, they weren't ready for it yet in the ring, and in the people's eyes, they weren't ready to be the top tag team, even if they were the most popular tag team. And then they were working for the tag team title against the Guns, who, again, have all the potential in the world, but were greener than pepper trees, and it wasn't ready to put them in that kind of spotlight and that kind of pressure. And then the tag team division went to shit because the greenest teams on the pepper tree were fighting for the belts while everybody else was being made into six-man teams to satisfy the self-indulgent masturbatory fantasies of the EVPs that wanted to have their own belts and play with their friends instead of jumping into the deep end of the pool. And since then, the acclaimed and Billy have been floating basically on the rap and the scissoring and have had nothing really going on of any dramatic nature. Did I encapsulate that as well as could be expected? I think so. I wasn't too excited about this match, and a lot of it was because I've lost a lot of the enthusiasm, if not all of it, for the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Well, but now that it seems like they're going to do something. So we'll see what happens, because... Caster rapped, and Buddy didn't like it, and jumped out on the floor and just started kicking the shit out of him. And they got into a big six-way, and okay again. Now there's six guys, and they're fighting all over the place, and they're on the floor. This is the brawl match. Wild inside and out. We're 50 minutes into the program. We haven't had that yet. So, and that's, it's the House of Black. Okay. Now it may be called for. It's another course in your five-course dinner, not a hot dog eating contest, where that's all you get. You binge on one fucking thing over and over until you puke. So, again, they got some heat on Caster. They made a tag to Billy Gunn. He made a big comeback. And Malachi Black hit him with a spin kick. One, two, three. Wasn't that long. Was fairly wild. A lot of action. No funny shit. And then Malachi Black whispers to Billy Gunn. And so did Buddy. I didn't see what Brody did. But the heels walk out, and Billy starts taking his boots off. And as the fans start seeing it, they're chanting, no, no, and the response built. And it takes a while to unlace those boots, right? So they start chanting, you've still got it. And that got louder, but Billy took his boots off and left them in the middle of the ring and walked right out past the acclaimed. So either that... They're doing something obviously to tease his retirement or to give he's either going to retire which would kind of be anticlimactic but but people will buy that he would because of his age and his you know the fact that he's been doing this forever or it's a remotivational tool to repackage or have him find new new purpose or whatever which may or may not include the acclaimed and there could be some drama there so at least we'll see what's going to happen instead of... They didn't scissor for the first time in ages. That's what we got out of this, thankfully. Took him forever to get those boots off. Well, he's got long legs. This is TV. 
Well, what was he supposed to do? Take a box cutter and just slit the fucking laces? Yeah, that, I guess. That, I guess. That wouldn't be a full-fledged retirement. I'm just not enthusiastic about this. I'm killing it. But at least they're doing something to move this along instead of being stale. Yes. I give them that. Yes. And at least so, the House of Black, I'm not crazy about them, especially with the trio stuff, but we've seen tag matches. We've seen Buddy in singles matches. Brody King was in a singles match. Like you said. You want to give him a big spooky entrance like that? I'm cool with it. But if it ends there and they just wrestle, then I'm really good with it. No science fiction. No lights out and I've vanished. No promo. I'm facing the other way and there's smoke and I don't know what I'm looking at. None of this shit anymore. Just wrestling. Nothing where it looks like the middle of the Bohemian Rhapsody video is what you're saying. That's right. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's good. <laughs> oh, mama mia, mama mia. Let me go. Yeah. 